Hey everyone, it's Sarah Threadster, Nurse RN .com, and in this video, I'm going to talk about benzodiazepines versus barbiturates. And as always, whenever you get done watching this YouTube lecture, you can access the free quizzes that will test you on this content. So let's get started. First, let's talk about the similarities between benzos and barbiturates. So they are both known for their sedative hypnotic anxiolytic effects, and they achieve this by depressing our central nervous system. So they're both known as CNS depressants. Now they can both treat a wide variety of conditions. Some are better at treating this while some may be better at treating that. So in a nutshell, they both tend to treat anxiety, seizures, insomnia. Uh, they are many times used before procedures to help calm a patient down, relax them, or use during anesthesia, etc. Now the thing with benzos is that they're used more to treat nowadays anxiety and insomnia, where barbiturates, they treated that more back in the day. But since benzos have came onto the scene, they tend to be a little bit safer in these patients because with barbiturates, they, um, there's a risk of accidental overdose because barbiturates have a very small therapeutic index where there's a small threshold between the therapeutic dose and the toxic dose. So they were finding a long time ago that there was a lot of accidental overdoses with barbiturates. Now there is a risk of overdose with benzos. They can experience toxicity as well, but there is a lower risk with it compared with the barbiturates due to that low threshold. Now both of these drugs, they enhance the effects of the neurotransmitter GABA, which is gamma aminobutyric acid. So they enhance how this inhibitory neurotransmitter works in our body. So whenever it does its thing, what we get is we get a depressed central nervous system. And here in a second, we'll quickly go over the mechanism of action. Both of these drugs act on the GABA-A receptors in the body. The action of how they influence these GABA-A receptors is the same because what they're going to do whenever they bind, they're going to cause this channel to open up. And GABA-A receptors are known as ligand-gated receptors. So whenever binding occurs, you get this channel that opens up and chloride is going to go into the cell and it's going to hyperpolarize it and we're going to get that depressed central nervous system because remember GABA is an inhibitory neurotransmitter but how they influence this channel to work is a little bit different. And we're gonna talk about that and our differences here in a moment. Now with both of these drugs, there is a risk of dependence developing along with addiction, withdrawal, and tolerance. Withdrawal happens whenever the patient just abruptly quits taking that and that's usually whenever they've been taking this long term. And tolerance can develop with both of these um, again, with long-term usage, and this is where they're no longer getting the same effects from that medication. So they need a higher dose in order to achieve those same effects that they were getting before. And with both of these, you want to definitely educate the patient that they do not want to consume any alcohol because it can definitely increase the risk of overdose. And of course, they don't want to be taking any other types of CNS depressants. So they wouldn't want to be taking barbiturates and benzodiazepines together. That is contraindicated. Now let's look at the differences between benzodiazepines and barbiturates. So the first thing is how do you tell as a nurse if this medication is a barbiturate or a benzodiazepine. Well, you want to look at that generic name. So first, benzodiazepine. Most, not all, but most generic names tend to end in PAM or LAM. And if you look in the middle of that generic name, most of them will have a ZE or a ZO there. So look at the word benzodiazepine. You have a ZO and a ZE. And one of the generic drugs that follow that rule is like lorazepam. Now with barbiturates, most of those tend to end in barbitol. And if you look at barbiturates, you see barbit. So one of those drugs that follow that rule is like phenobarbital. So hopefully that'll help you recognize those drugs. Now let's talk about their mechanism of action. I pointed out in similarities that they influence the GABA-A receptor. So let's talk about their binding sites and how they influence that channel. So here with this illustration, I have our neurotransmitter GABA 
hanging out because we know that these medications enhance the neurotransmitter GABA. And then just for illustration purposes, I have barbiturates hanging out and I have benzos. So first let's talk about benzodiazepines. So we have our GABA A receptor, and this is a really cool receptor because it's made up of five subunits. It has two beta subunits, two alpha, and one gamma subunit. And since we're talking about benzos, we have a binding site for the benzodiazepine, and it is found between the alpha and the gamma. Now we also, on this GABA A receptor, have a binding site for the neurotransmitter GABA, and it's found between the alpha and beta subunit. So whenever binding occurs with this neurotransmitter GABA, and you have binding with benzo at its site, what will happen here in the middle is this channel that is found. This channel is going to open up and chloride is going to enter in and it's going to go down into the cell and it's going to hyperpolarize it. So it's going to decrease its firing potential because remember, GABA is an inhibitory neurotransmitter. So it inhibits, impedes that message from being sent. And so we're going to dep depress our central nervous system. So hence we're going to get sedative, hypnotic, anxiolytic effects on the body. Now, one key concept I want you to remember is that benzodiazepines increase how often this channel opens up. So it's going to do that. Now, on the flip side, let's look at barbiturates. Barbiturates hanging out up here. So again, we have the binding of our neurotransmitter GABA at its site. And the barbiturate binding site is found either on the alpha or the beta subunit. So it locks down, binds, does its thing. And it also causes that channel to open up. So chloride's gonna go in, do the same thing that it did over here. It's gonna hyperpolarize that cell. Now the difference that I want you to remember is how it influenced that channel. It's going to increase how long that channel stays open. So that channel increases in this duration, how long it stays open for chloride to flow through, hyperpolarize the cell. Over here with benzos, it was increasing how often the channel opens. So those are two concepts you definitely want to keep in mind. Now one neat difference about barbiturates that benzodiazepines doesn't do is that in high doses of barbiturates, they can actually influence this GABA A receptor and cause this channel to open without the influence or the help of the neurotransmitter GABA. So benzodiazepines cannot do that. Now, antidote, how about if we have an overdose? Because we learned earlier that barbiturates have that small threshold, so there's a higher risk of overdose with those. It can occur with benzodiazepines as well, but it's a little less risk compared to barbiturates. The thing with barbiturates is that if an overdose does occur, there is not an antidote to reverse the effects. The patient has to be supported. A lot of times they will um, experience respiratory failure, so they'll need mechanical ventilation. Sometimes dialysis can be used to remove that toxic medication from their blood or activated charcoal. Now, with benzodiazepine, there is an antidote that you want to remember. It's called flumazenil, and this can be used to reverse the effects of benzodiazepine. Toxicity, it needs to be used with um, caution. Do the, does the benefit outweigh the risk involved? So that's something that the physician will have to determine. Okay, now let's test your knowledge on what we just learned by taking this quiz question. Our question says, which CNS depressant causes the chloride channel to stay open longer? Is it A, benzodiazepines, or B, barbiturates? And the answer is, B, barbiturates, because remember, barbiturates, they increase how long this channel stays open so we get more chloride going through into that cell, which is gonna hyperpolarize it and give us our depressed central nervous system. The benzodiazepines, they're just going to increase how often that channel opens. Now, if you would like more free quiz questions on this material, you can access the link in the YouTube description below, and thank you so much for watching.